So with weekly test 11, um, it was very clear here whether you understood what was going on and you've, you've worked through this type of work, you got a 100% right, or you, you actually didn't know what was needed and, uh, and you got that completely wrong. So this is really one of those things. It's just a going through the motions. Um, the key thing here is to recognize that you actually are um, forming the uh, silyl enol ether, so OTMS, um, is what you're looking at, and that this is going to then react with the aldehyde. Um, and this over here is what we need to look at in terms of the half chair. Now, one thing is, of course, not clear, um, and what's important, um, I think there was only one person in the class who, who answered the question with a, 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 an incredible level of depth, um, indicating the, um, why we have this plus minus here. Um, the T-butyl group, this is not chiral, so the T-butyl group is either up or down. Um, obviously, once we form the TMS ether, now there's an option. But of course, this is now racemic. It's up or down. Um, and I've just drawn in the product, the, the one version, the one enantiomer, which is up. Um, but relatively, the product needs to be, this has to be down versus that up. So we can look at the one, just one version, because they're enantiomers, they would work. So we'll choose it with the T-butyl group going up. So we draw out our half chair, our two half chairs. One's going to look like that. The other one is going to look uh, like this. Uh, we put on its o TMS. A lot of you put O minus. Remember, this is using the TMS silo of uh, TMS, sorry. Uh, over here, if the T butyl group it will be facing up, over here, it would be on the equatorial position. That's, sorry, that's an incredibly messy um, uh, group there. My bad. Okay, so this one over here is preferred. Uh, because T-butyl equals equatorial. And then we have to analyze when this reacts with the electrophile. I know it's a number of people also kind of said with the nucleophile. Um, there's two options, either going to A or B. Um, so if we go to A, we get the twist boat. Um, so A equals twist boat. And it's because it leans up towards it. So as it turns, it's becoming uh, more parallel. So the twist boat is going to look something like this. All right, that's the basic structure over there. So this is where the OTMS is. And it's going towards the electrophile. It's not too important to draw that in. And the T-butyl group is over there. So that's the correct twist boat, um, which is disfavored. Um, and so we can say they're disfavored. Sorry. Uh, and then the other one is the twist, uh, the twist chair. So that one is going to be a little bit like this. Something like that. Um, and the TMS group, it gets a bit messy, but this would be the o TMS. Over here would be the electrophile, it's all dots. So it says it's forming, and over there is where the T-butyl group is um, on that one over there. So this is the uh, B uh, equals twist chair, and this is favored over there. All right, so. Um, that would have been enough for me to give you your six marks. Um, and yeah, uh, that would have been fine. Now, if you can draw out these two things, and they need to be drawn correctly. I mean, you can't just draw a structure and leave out the T-butyl group or leave out the OTMS and that sort of thing. I was a little bit lenient in marking here, but um, in an exam, I need to be fair to those who draw it properly. So uh, do try and do that. Um, but even if you don't draw those out, if you didn't draw those two, but at least recognize that A and B would have given you the twist uh, boat and twist chair, respectively, you would have got the equivalent of five out of six, so you would have done still well, even if you didn't draw these correctly. Okay, uh, the last question is uh, something out of second year, um, and again, a lot of people are getting it right, but also a lot of people are getting it, um, getting it wrong, um, and it really is quite critical that you are able to do that correctly. Now, you could have Look down either one of those things. Um, uh, some of the, the, the horrible answers to this question were um, doing substitution, which in class the day before I had specifically said, 
it's not going to do that. Um, so uh, yeah, this is an elimination, an E2 elimination. It's actually a really easy one because um, yeah, as we as we look at it, it's already set up. Um, for those of you who got this right, you would have seen like straight away. So there's a propyl group over there. There's a T-butyl group over there. Um, and we look at this, the ethyl is on this side, the chlorine is on this side, um, and two hydrogens on this side. So um, some of you drew out the enantiomer, you got it incorrect um, in this new projection. Um, but essentially the H and, uh, H and Cl are anti-periplania. Uh, for E2 elimination. And so the base comes in, which is OME minus, picks up the proton, this goes in like this, chlorine leaves, and the T butyl and ethyl on the same side, which is, I mean, what's actually given already in the product over there. So um, ET is over there, one, two, three, and the T butyl is over there as well. Uh, so yeah, so this would have been the great product and that would have given you your four marks uh, for that question. Would have been fine. Good.